Tsukaro, all the floor is yours. Ambassador, and thank you, uh, our UN colleagues, for inviting me here. Um, I hear all of the good uh, intentions, and I think uh, it's very difficult to argue with sustainability, with development, with impact and innovation. I think these are absolutely critical pieces of the equation uh, for any society to be successful going forward. Now, in the way of background, I am a scientist and a businessman. Um, I have been in the business of uh, curing cancer via the immune system for the last 23 years. Um, in 2002, I was presented with an opportunity to deal with a corporate crisis. And we successfully dealt with it about the same time that I became familiar with a crisis in Armenia. And this was the crisis that I saw, a people's crisis, a children's crisis in rural villages of Armenia. And so that catalyzed the work that we have been doing for the last 14 years. And, and one thing that I think it's important to uh, bring up is we had no agenda the whole concept of what we do, have been doing, started with a need that was there. So we didn't come with a preconceived agenda as to what should be done in rural Armenia. So with that, I'll go through a very quick presentation. I can't promise it's a short presentation, but it's a very quick presentation. Uh, as everybody knows, Armenia is tucked in the Middle East. It's a tiny little country between Turkey, Iran, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, uh, landlocked, and uh, it has very poor infrastructure that has been in the process of uh, being addressed. Uh, who we are as an organization, uh, we are mostly in Yerevan. If you look at the picture, both here and, and in Yerevan, um, and if you're a male, you certainly don't get the feeling that this is an equal uh, opportunity employer or certainly an equal gender uh, employer. But we have uh, 35 staff members, they're professionals, they're educators, doctors, nurses, sociologists, psychologists, economists on our staff, and we have 150 contract employees that work with us in the field every day. And even our staff members are in the field daily. In New York, it's mostly fundraising and compliance uh, to be a 501c3 uh, charity. We're a four-star charity, the highest ranking. We have some notable partners amongst them on top. We didn't put that intentionally. It's UNDP and UNICEF. Uh, but we have corporate partners. We have some private foundations, as well as uh, some um, uh, major uh, agencies. The purpose is to empower the young generation of Armenians in neglected rural villages of Armenia. Now let me quickly address why we use the word neglected, not because they are intentionally neglected, but they are in villages that are hard to get. And the perception of many around the world, and sometimes in Armenia, is that these village people don't have the capacity to do things. But having uh, gone to Armenia four to six times a year, and on each visit, visiting the villagers and interacting with them, I cannot tell you how wrong that impression that villagers may be ignorant is. So the question again becomes, why rural Armenia? Simply, uh, people are high potential. 99% literacy rate. Uh, there's a fellow named Siroli that may be familiar to some of you. He's a development man, and he's uh, founded the Siroli Institution, uh, Institute rather. And uh, this man uh, talked about uh, sustainable development in the early 70s, mid 70s, and how it has failed. Why? Not because the concept is a is a bad concept, but it has failed because we have not asked the stakeholders what their needs are. We've come there with preconceived ideas about what their needs should be. 
And so um, these people live in dire circumstances. It was uh, not helped by the 1988 earthquake of Armenia that took 30,000 lives. The collapse of the Soviet Union that stopped all subsidies going into the villages of Armenia. And of course, the regional conflict. And the outcome of this has been mass immigration, out migration, and loss of human resources. Now, of course, we all understand that the fundamental economic driver has to be human resources. Without human resources, you cannot drive an economy. It doesn't happen uh, by machines, at least not yet. Uh, our projects and programs, as uh, was referred to before, encompass all kinds of areas that impact life because you cannot really segregate and address one thing when the system is failing. So it has to involve healthcare, economic development, community development, but the emphasis has to be on education, and I don't mean just scholastic education, but education of all sorts, knowledge building about different types of subjects. And, and so our organization has undertaken both infrastructure challenges, because you cannot have education being provided in an infrastructure that is failing, it's not respectful, and it's not safe. So we renovate th things like schools, medical clinics, community centers, and so on. But most importantly, it's not about renovation. The only purpose of renovation is to make sure that we have a place where we can provide the best education, the best health care, the best social economic environment, and, and so on. So these are critical components of our programs. To date, in the last 13, 14 years, we have spent $30 million on these projects. Given the enormity of what we have addressed, I think that is uh, probably a very economic way of doing it. We have touched the lives in 44 villages in 14 years, and that impacts 67,000 or more people. So the next question for us has been, how do we rapidly scale our work to all 1,000 villages of Armenia? That is a challenge, and if we were to do it the way we have been doing it in the last 14 years, pretty much manually, village by village, it would be nearly impossible to address this crisis in time. So we've come up with a novel idea to do this. We call it the SMART and this wasn't meant to steal from your smart idea, but it confirms. It, <laughs> it confirms it, of course. And the purpose of smart, uh, not to be confused with other technological initiatives, uh, like TUMO, for example, is it utilizes modern communication technologies and, very importantly, proficiency in English. English has been a hallmark of what we have undertaken in the last 14 years to connect Armenia's rural populations with the global community because it's difficult to get to every village and it's difficult to be able to implement the kind of knowledge building programs that we can uh, without being able to connect them through technology. So the purpose of technology is to connect them. And the purpose of the initiative is to implement the most successful programs that we have been undertaking in the last 14 years. So objective, of course, is accelerate the acquisition of knowledge and training, importantly, across different disciplines. And the purpose is, of course, to jumpstart the advancement of these neglected communities. The first smart center, and I'll give you a glimpse of it in a second, it's an innovative concept. It's a 25,000 square foot facility in the middle of a place that will shock you if you go there. You'd never anticipate something like this could happen in the middle of a rural village or a center. It's, in, it's located in the earthquake-stricken uh, region of Lori. It's now three minutes from a major new highway that is being constructed, and it should be done by the end of the year, I hear. Uh, that's M6, uh, so it's very, very uh, uh, approximately located. 
it has all of the necessities like fiber optics, connectivity, and so on and so forth. And most importantly, it is accessible based on the demographic studies that we've already conducted to approximately 200,000 people. The total cost of this undertaking will be $7.5 million, and is, it is on track for a mid-2018 opening, although we will have a soft opening at the end of this year. So it will be operational by the end of this year. This is the finished product, and it is an architectural marvel. Uh, the insides look like this. So this is to motivate people to bring about a sense of pride for them to do the kinds of things they're certainly natively capable of doing. Now, just to give you a sense, this is about a month ago, so this is real. It's not just a concept, okay? <laughs> I had to climb a mountain to take this particular view because I was fixated of this exposure. So it's well underway towards completion. And also importantly, uh, this is the campus of SMART. Uh, right now, it's on about 12 hectares of land. And by the time it's completed, uh, sometime at the end of next year, it will have many, many different components, an agricultural component, vertical farming, it will have energy components and uh, also a guest house for visitors, lecturers that come in and, uh, and participate in our programs. Um, and, and so the vision for us is to build 20 smart centers throughout Armenia. We believe this will change the rural landscape of Armenia. And this will be a 10-year implementation plan if we are pushing it hard. It will take about $200 million, and it will target all of the 1.5 million rural Armenians. Now, also importantly, this smart model is adaptable to any part of the world that needs such a concept. There's nothing that is specific to Armenia about this. It certainly could be done in Africa, in Asia, and neglected parts of America even, and South America, and so on. So with that, I will conclude my remarks, and I think I overran by about two and a half minutes, so I apologize. <laughs> Thank you.